Hello everyone, my name is, where you don't care what my name is, and for this year I'm going to focus on the films that got a lot of build-up, got a lot of hype, but were either failures or success. And I'm going to put them in categories, because let's be honest, there's been a lot of great superhero films this year, and I don't want to make the whole list, you know, of them all being the best, or some of them being the worst. So, we're going to start off with the top five worst movies of this year. Then we'll get to the top five best movies of this year. So, let's start off with number five from the worst movies of this year, Baywatch. Now, when we heard this movie was going to come out, I think a lot of people were kind of confused. Because, why would you want to make a remake of a TV show that, to be honest, if you ask anybody nowadays how it went, I don't think many of them would even know about it. And there's a reason why. Baywatch is not very well known. Hell, it's not even on television anymore. They don't have reruns of it on any of the old channels that love to rerun some of the old shows, which is a shame, but, you know, it happens. So, when they wanted to make a remake of this, I think a lot of us had a feeling it was not going to be good, and sure enough, it wasn't. And I really do feel bad for The Rock, because we know he's a great actor. We know he's a funny actor. But this film did not do very well, with a very bad story that made no sense. A lot of jokes that really didn't work well with a lot of the audience. And, yeah, let's be honest, I think a lot of people would rather watch something else than this film, which doesn't feel like a Baywatch film at all. In fact, it just feels like another action film with The Rock. Um, the reason I keep it so low on the list is even though it didn't do so well, it has The Rock on it. And he, it can be funny at times, just not this time. Number four, The Dark Tower. Okay, so Stephen King's films, when they get on theater, sometimes they do well, but sometimes not so much. And it's a shame, too, because this film is based on the book that it shows that a lot of Stephen King's books are all connected in the same universe. They're all part of one big universe, and The Dark Tower is able to reveal that. Books like Christine, books like Carrie, books like Cujo, books like It, all part of the same universe, and The Dark Tower plays a big role in that. The problem with this film is not only did it have problems when it was trying to be made, but the problem was they were trying to stuff all of the book series of The Dark Tower in just two hours, which is not a good thing you want to do, especially when you're trying to make, you know, a film based on the book series. And also, yeah, let's be honest, um, the guy who plays the villain, eh, he probably only did this for the paycheck. So it's a shame. I mean, this, the film could have been good, but the story for it really was lacking a lot that a lot of people liked from the book. None of the characters were good. And, yeah, let's be honest, special effects weren't that special. But let's get to number three. Number three goes to The Mummy. Okay, so, The Mummy. You know, it's a shame that, Bre that Brendan Fraser's movie of The Mummy was a much better remake than this one. It's a shame, too, because Universal talked about how they wanted to make their own dark universe, how they wanted to bring in Dracula, the Bride of Frankenstein, the creature from the Black Lagoon, all in the same universe that would have been awesome it would have been great to see all these great horror icons again only this film sucked nothing about the story made any sense none of the characters including tom cruise are likable the female love interest is bland boring and clearly shows no emotions in this film and i was very disappointed with the mummy i really thought she was going to be an awesome villain but unfortunately she sucked she wasn't threatening, she wasn't cool, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but Imhotep from the last film, and even the CGI rock scorpion guy was a lot better than this one. But even though it was bad, and it does kind of make us wonder if they're going to continue with this dark universe, it's not the worst of the worst. It's bad. Oh, <laughs> trust me, it's bad. Not as bad as the films we're going to get to. Let's get on to number two. The Emoji Movie. Did anybody really want to see a movie about emojis? Anybody? No, seriously, did, did anybody want to see it? No. 
And to think they were actually going to make a Popeye animated movie. Popeye! We saw the animated short they did. It looked better than this one. So why did they do it? Because apparently they want to sell this to the little kids who they think are so stupid they're going to go see this movie. Apparently they were right since they did make some money back, but still, this film was awful. Just, just awful. I mean, the story for this film sucked. The, the characters, none of them are that good. None of them are anything different from the other characters we've seen in the past. It's a ripoff of Wreck-It Ralph. And, of course, let's get right down to it. The moral for this film was terrible. Just be true to yourself. We've seen that in every other story. But this film fails in doing that. It fails in executing that. Because there's a lot of stuff going on that is just so stupid. The jokes don't make any sense. Oh, this film. It's... It makes me so mad. I hate it so much. I just didn't get it at all. <sighs> but even though it was bad, even though it was the worst animated film I've seen in a probably a year next to Norm of the North, it's not the worst of the worst. There's one other film that had every opportunity to be good, had every opportunity to be the best, and it failed miserably five times. And that's Transformers the last night you know if you're gonna make a sequel to your films the last thing you want to do is repeat a lot of the mistakes you made in the first one why because if you continue doing that no one's gonna come watch it no one's gonna like the films they're gonna shit on it and unfortunately for the rest of us that's what Michael Bay did he kept repeating the same formula over and over and over and over again he kept giving us the same stupid story, the same stupid characters, same stupid dialogue. Nothing was different. Nothing was nothing changed. It was the same goddamn thing. And it sucked. Every one of his films sucked. This one was the worst one of them all because somehow the dialogue got worse. Somehow the story got worse. Somehow the actors got worse. Especially Anthony Hopkins, who I love so much. Why? Why did you have to be in this film? Why? 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. It's just... It's so terrible. I hate this film so much. I had to sit through this film. And I had to just try my best to not die from the sheer stupidity of this film. It was so bad. It's worse than the other films on this list. That's why I consider it the worst film of 2017. It is that bad. Really, really bad. <sighs> Thankfully, we're gonna get to the top five best films of 2017. Hopefully that'll make me feel better. So, until then guys, I'll see you for the next video. Take care everybody, see you next time we give you more love, more entertainment, hit the subscribe button, check out my Facebook page, check out my Twitter page. And I'll see you next time, guys. Bye. Left it seems while I was.